Councilor Bird, could you give us the Good Lord and Mayor. The most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to, to serve the people and just thank you for many blessings you have bestowed upon this tribe and just thank you for the leadership and be with the council members as we do the business of the tribe and take care of our people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Roll call. Dick Lane. Here. Frankie Vargas. Present. Will Anglin. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Joe Bird. Here. Julia Hebbs. Here. Jody Fishenhoff. Meredith Riley. Here. Janelle Fulbright. Here. Don Garvin. Here. Chuck Koski Jr. Here. Donna Boyd Jordan. Lee Keener. Morning. Curtis Snell. David Thornton. Present. David Walkenstein. Here. Kara Cowan-Watts. Ani. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion for approval of minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. On our reports, uh, Human Services, Marcia. Remind everybody about the no water food distribution ribbon cutting. That's June seventh. It's going to be at ten thirty in the morning. Uh, <clears throat> on the Collinsville site, we are uh, still waiting to hear something, and they've assured me they'll have something to me by the end of the week. And and if you all would uh, like, I'll send something out to Diana on that if I get anything. Would, would like. Okay. Um, I have some handouts on the clothing voucher. This is an update. Also, uh, I know you all received a copy of my lengthy monthly report that I did, and after looking at it, I really liked it, but I thought it might be too much information on a monthly basis. <laughs> so I, I wanted to entertain the thought of doing that on a quarterly basis. So just whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, I know you have mounds of stuff to look at. Yeah. That's all I have to report. Councilor Walker, excuse me. Councilor Walker, stick. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, Miss Lamb. Uh, first, I just want to tell you thank you for uh, helping out the family that was homeless on uh, on getting them put up and. I know very, uh, everyone deserves a second chance and hopefully they'll seize the opportunity and, and, uh, and they'll, they'll run with it. The next thing I just want to talk to you about, uh, I was looking in the uh, past minutes uh, for the volunteer services for the veterans building. Was that, was that a... Uh, we're trying to update our list that we've got on who's doing what because it's probably a good uh, year old and we know things change. Yeah. So I'm trying to get an update on who said they would do what and get make sure the phone numbers are still okay and and uh, maybe by uh, uh, next month or before I'll, I'll get something out to you on that. Okay. Well, that's all I have. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, thank you for handing out the update and the, the different report format and those things. It looks like they were able to respond on changing from the July 4th holiday for us, yeah. and, and I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for being able to look at that and consider it and then actually getting it done. What, what does this mean on the um, income guideline and the, the comparison and the look? How, so you've done the analysis. How will that change and affect people applying for clothing vouchers? 
uh, the Council on Fishing Hawks request on how it compares to our standardized Cherokee Nation minimum wage. It says ours is plus 125 percent. So are we going to change what our poverty guidelines are with respect to the program? No, I think what they were trying to do then mm -hmm. here is to show you the comparison that our income guideline is a little bit higher where it make more people eligible. What we're trying to do is reach the working poor is what I call them. And, uh, that's what we're trying to reach instead of the very low, low income compared to what DHS or, or the uh, uh, states do. Well, I was trying to I don't know what uh, the councilwoman's intent was, but I want to make sure that I'm reading it correctly because somebody's inevitably going to have a question and then I won't have you there to help me answer that. So, If you will address your, your question to me in an email form, I'll send it on to the, uh, it's Carol Whitworth. Okay. She's the one that did this, so she can really explain it. Okay. And then on your, the report that you had submitted prior to the meeting on the last page, so what, what is going to happen? There's an income comparison. Um, and then there's the, we're going to have evidence-based program evaluations. And then there's Medicaid building, billing for children. Uh, can you maybe tell me a bit more about all three of those? I'm just learning about that. But what okay. I understand is that, like, if our workers does some, uh, for lack of a different word, if we do some uh, uh, social work activities or something, we can get compensated back for that. That's in the work. You know, I'm stuck as I'm still talking about it. Okay, so the Medicaid billing on that blue section, that may be third party billing to help recover some of the costs. Yeah. Okay, and then so on the income comparison of applicants. Um, is, is that where we're looking at maybe actually changing those income requirements for some of those programs? I didn't understand what that initiative was. I didn't write mine. So it's on the, I mean, like the other numbers were very useful, but I, they were very explanatory. I didn't have questions. And then I got to the last page and I didn't quite understand all of what was going on. Yeah, it's the very last page. The top right and then the first and then the bottom right. We were going to uh, look at, uh, <clears throat> to see that, um, like maybe next month we could give a report that says uh, from zero to a thousand, we had this many participants from a thousand to this, we had that many participants. That's what we were working on. Okay, so it's breaking out by income brackets yes. to see yeah. where folks are sitting. Yeah. Within. Okay. Yeah. And that's why uh, I wanted to really be able to target the very low income to where the ones who may uh, not be aware of the housing program, but would meet that criteria. So. Okay, and then on the program evaluations, do you have criteria you're already looking for and then you're surveying against that? Or are you asking our participants to tell us what their expectations are on the programs in order to go back we're and We're trying say, to find out what the need is out there, you know, and how okay. we're doing and how we're I want to make sure that we're a friendly place, to, for lack of a word, and, and that uh, we may not can meet all needs, but I know uh, things change so much that uh, at some point, if uh, one of you guys come in and say, what's the need really out there, we might can, might can tell you what it is. Because you, your staff are only over there in Catoosa next to Daylight Donuts. You don't have staff over on Route 66, right? Uh, at this time. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much, Marcia. Okay. I appreciate the patience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, you through, Kara? Yes, thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilor uh, Keener. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that was, I had a question along the same lines uh, as the income comparison and you stated that the the plus 125 percent is what we're going with, mm -hmm. and I guess my question is: if we have we not done the income comparison as far as <coughs> with the 2012 
uh, U.S. guidelines for par reading? Or, or I'm guessing, I, I'm asking how do we arrive at the plus 125 percent to start uh, with? Well, we try, like I said, we try to get those that are the single parent that are working, really struggling out there, and that seemed to, to fit that guideline, you know. Uh, the poverty, you know, that's usually people who have or their, re their income is SSI or just uh, that. But then we wanted to also hit the ones who were a little bit over. Okay, so we're not excluding the ones that are below plus 120? No, up to. I'm sorry. Okay. Up to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Anyone else? Got one question. Um, with respect to air conditioners, um, do, do you, does your office, your department, loan or give air conditioners to elders in need, or is it housing, or is it both? <coughs> well, there's been different programs that have air conditions. I know community services had them, but ours is our participants have to be LIHEAP eligible to receive it, and uh, we'll go out and our priority is those that just don't have any heat. Now please keep in mind sometimes the uh, uh, child of that elder will come out and say, you know, mom and daddy really need an air conditioner. It's hot in their house. And when we go out and talk to mom and daddy, they don't want an air conditioner. They don't want the high bills and it's too cold for them. So, uh, and then the others that, you know, they really want one. Maybe their old one has gone out. Maybe their uh, uh, central heat air has gone out, you know, different criteria. But uh, I know at one point I remember community service having some probably about six or seven years ago. So I don't know if they still do or not. So this this is not necessarily something you guys do right now. Uh, is that is that right? Or? I'm sorry. This is loaning or giving air conditioners is not something you guys do this summer or is? It depends on if we have a, uh, additional LIHEAP money left over. Oh, oh, okay. Just see. like the stoves. Okay, I see. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh, Councilor Garvin? Yes, yeah, a couple of things. Thank you. This uh, voucher brochure, has it already gone out to the schools? I think it has. It has. <coughs> I was going to say it needs to be there before school's out. Most of them are out next week. Yeah, that was our goal to get them out, you know, beforehand, and uh, we've, we've tried to get them out as many places as we can. We've also got it on the monitors in the health departments and here at the complex, and, you know, the, the TV monitor. In the military, they always say this 10% doesn't get the word, so uh, yeah. I appreciate what you're doing there. Uh, and we, we always, I mean, we don't just stop at Nancy, that we take them way past the deadline. So they'll be reminded when it's getting closer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another thing, uh, on the backpack program, are you, can you update us on that? Uh, I'm sorry. The backpack program? Uh, I am, uh, I, I haven't, I personally have been involved in that, but I understand that I will be. I've been waiting on a meeting with Ginger, Ginger Brown, and then we will learn about that. Uh, it's been in human services, but that Norma was Norma Merriman was involved in this, so I'm just wondering about it. But I think we will have some involvement. Okay. Yeah. We'll keep us posted on that. Okay, I will. Thank you. Well, uh, Councilor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I failed to ask because I was thinking it was agenda, an agenda item, but this came up in executive and finance and it'll be at full council and you had responded in writing on the elders in need program so I don't recall that when I looked through the book that the amendments that are referred to or clarifications in this question and answer are reflected in the budget mod which will be heard tonight did I miss that because if we pass the budget mod, it has the attached language with it for the policy for the elders in need. And this says indicates changes. <laughs> the, uh, the policy that you, you know, brought to our attention has been changed. 
Now, what are you referring to? So the documentation for tonight's full council meeting where the budget bod has the money allocated with the policy to back up <coughs> the budget doesn't necessarily reflect what's in the, the question and answer that's been emailed out. Okay. Is that, I think. So what's the proper procedure? Does it need to be, can I distribute it out in, um, I don't know, additional addendums to your packet or? So, Madam Speaker, that <coughs> I would think. If you'll just, if you'll just provide that tonight before the meeting, then we can distribute it out to the council before we vote on the budget mod. And I think that would take care of it. Here is that. That would I would appreciate yeah. that way we make all sure minds are all clear because sure we got this, but then I want to make sure it's not your normal portion, but that's where it ended up. So or Lacey, if if you had time, you could send that over to Gail or Shelley here in just a few minutes, we could distribute it before council meeting and let them look at mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank I'll you. send that to her and she can help me answer. Okay. Ready? Anyone else? Thank you, Marcia. Appreciate it. Uh, community services. Who's going? Michael? Hi, Mr. Sutherland is at a, uh, gotta get this right, Native American Indian Housing Council reauthorization outreach session day in Catusa. So, uh, uh, Gary Cooper and I will be tag teaming his report <coughs> to the committee. Uh, I do believe you have all of the reports, and uh, as far as the community services portion goes, if I don't know the answer, I'll write it down and we'll get you an answer. With, uh, David's portion that is. Uh, but if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Try. Uh, Councilor Hoskin. And you may need to take this back to David. It's not pressing, but I wondered if there was a practice, procedure, or policy with respect to the housing rehab so that if you have an applicant who applies, say, this year and they submit this wealth of information, income, et cetera, copies of their deed, and then a year later they come back and, and need additional assistance. I just wonder if there's some practice or policy or procedure that allows us to get back to their old file and pull a lot of that information out because uh, otherwise sometimes I hear constituents will say, boy, I had to get all this information again and, and I'm glad to do it, but uh, it, you know, it seems like they could just look at my file. So okay. if you could pass that on. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. You bet. You may be a little early, but I it's uh, I, I can answer it if you want. Uh, the uh, Arbor Road is progressing very good. Uh, we've got ag base down on probably two thirds of the road. Uh, the portion that doesn't have uh, ag base is rock, by the way. The portion that doesn't have rock on the road is down towards the creek where it ties into uh, Dry Creek Road. Uh, we're having to do some widening in there where uh, there was a lot of riprap and uh, stream protection there along the, the actual dry creek portion itself. They're having to remove all that, do some widening, uh, and then after that widening is done, there'll be a, a that's primarily where they have been working is on, on that end. The, the reason I ask that is the uh, decoration is coming up at the end of the month, and on the part that comes off of, is that Highway 100? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know where it makes that little car, that little jog, and then right there is the cemetery. Is there is there a way you think we can have that in pretty good shape so that there's a there's some fear of parking, I think. Right. Uh, because we had to take some of that for the road, and so now the community's kind of wondering where they're supposed to supposed to park. If you could look into that, right. so we can figure out how uh, they don't let them come up into the cemetery to park. And I think we've took part of the parking there at the front. Uh, and I don't know if we've left a pretty high, uh, kind of a high embankment there. I don't know how they're going to get the cars up into the parking area. Okay. We'll look at it. I was out there last week, and they had cut that drive back a little bit okay. to, try to try to get it. At, if we could kind of uh, figure out a way to bring that down gradually back to the road, or somebody will fall off that last Sunday we'll have an accident or something out there because they gather there in the front plus they park there in the front. Right. I just want to make you aware of it. Okay. 
Okay. I'm glad you did. We'll uh, definitely look at, look at the end of that. I appreciate anything you could do there. Yes, and I know they will too. There's uh, there'll be a lot of folks out there that I think it's the last I, I guess it's the 27th. 27th, okay. That should be our target date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Councilor Walker, Stoop. Hey, Michael. Yes, sir. Hey, are we getting closer to putting a cover there on the Marcoma property? We are. Our uh, inventory update that Marcoma submittal is going in uh, by June fifteenth, uh, I believe, is when that's due back to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Uh, that it didn't get submitted with our first submittal, if you remember, and then we yeah. went and added it. Uh, it, it will, it's due back June June fifteenth. Uh, once it gets back to them, they will go through their processes, and uh, I'm not sure what the final date is on the uh, for them to issue an official inventory, uh, but it's going to be, I'm going to say, probably mid to late summer before they'll have everything official. Uh, once it's on our official inventory is when it becomes eligible to spend dollars on. We're looking at probably a little while anyhow on that. Would it be quicker if we went another route to at least get, a, get some gravel or some chat or something on there? Depending on what route, yeah, I mean, certainly it could be quicker, yes. <coughs> what else are we talking about? Mm -hmm. We talked about it actually. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, thanks, Michael. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Is that it? Could I, Michael, yes, could you stay here to the meeting yes, and we'll, we'll work on that? Yes, Thank you. Are you doing roads and transportations? No, I'm doing housing services. Or housing <laughs> services. <laughs> I think I'm doing housing services, and then Michael will be back up. To I think he'll be right back up here. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Gary. We're just uh, we're just tag teaming it. But, um, I did notice uh, late Friday evening I was going through uh, some of our departmental reports and noticed that some public disclosures did not get uh, on the report. Um, so I have an amended po a public disclosure report that I'm passing around, and I'll, uh, there should be one for Shelly. And if not, I'll be sure to email her one too. Um, there are four public disclosures that I noticed needed to be made. Um, one is under home ownership, uh, Michelle Clutter, a cousin of Stephanie Carroll in Housing Services. And we have three under rental assistance. Melinda Gatewood, a sister of Melissa Gatewood over in Career Services. Kristen Young, a stepdaughter of Vincent Smith at the Marshall Service. And Jason Whitmire, a sister of Robin Hurtill at the Marshall Service. Those are the public disclosures for uh, the housing assistance part for this month. Um, I believe that you also received a copy of the uh, committee report. Uh, the monthly report, and if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer those for you. Or if you uh, have any questions about anything else, I'll try to answer those for you. And, uh, any questions? Mr. Chair. Councilman King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wondered if you could give us a public uh, update on the housing project. That we'll yes. Um, the new the new housing we are uh, as a matter of fact I have requested some numbers just so I can report to you tonight because David is out there so I was going to deliver his report tonight I will go ahead and uh, I found out just before I came over we received 681 applications so far um, on the new applications our application staff right now is in the process of going through um, and doing a pool of applications, updating applications, and doing a pool for each county. Um, the way that works is uh, uh, we will try to pull 10, 15, however many, find out where the land is, and then try to start building, uh, putting them together on projects. Uh, we want to try to find 10, 15 houses that are in the same general area um, so we can start on them at one time so we don't have one in Bartlesville and one in South Song that we're trying to if we have all of the ones in, for instance, Rogers County, uh, then we would like to build all of those at the same time and then so on and so forth. So they are working on updating. So all of you should have uh, uh, folks in your area that's received letters, that's received some information. 
for some updated information, uh, uh, where the land is, copy of deeds, stuff like that, so we can find out all that information and we can uh, <coughs> go through and do it. I know that we have probably uh, uh, already looked at about eight or nine houses that people are living in to make sure that they are substandard or whatever the case is to see if they would qualify. So they are, our application staff is working very hard on uh, on updating applications for, uh, for every county. Once they sign on the dotted line, what's your estimated time to complete those? Uh, once we, once we, the, the uh, once they sign on the dotted line, which they don't want to sign on the dotted line until we have all the legal stuff done, until we know that the that the land is uh, is free and clear, um, that we can go out and build a house there. Once they do that, we anticipate between 45 and 60 days to construct at the most. Uh, uh, the longest part is going to be uh, uh, making sure that they have clear title, um, that you know they don't have a mortgage on it, or if they have a mortgage on it, we've seen some where. Uh, Maybe they own 20 acres and they had a mortgage to buy the 20 acres and they paid it down and maybe they only owe $5,000 on 20 acres. Uh, a lot of times the banks will give a partial release for the one acre that we need to build a house on. Uh, so they'll keep a mortgage on the 19 acres and then they'll give up the one acre. So they own it free and clear now so they can give it over to the housing authority so we can go in and, and uh, uh, put a house on. Is that our legal department in-house handling all the paperwork, or do, are we using the outside? Well, um, we're looking at using the outside. Uh, 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 we haven't really decided on that yet. We're, we're working with the, uh, our legal staff to determine what the best way to do it is. Um, it looks like that the best way to do it is to have a, uh, either an abstract company or someone provide us with a title opinion. Uh, to make sure that the property is on green clear or title policy. Uh, one of those two things is what we're looking at, which both will require title opinion. Um, and then uh, uh, that's how we get it done. But each each county, an abstractor in that county has to do the abstract. But as far as the uh, other part goes, we can do that somewhere else. If, if uh, it can be done over here, we could. I, I don't know that, that that's a possibility. Just, by, just due to the number. When you find out that information, could you relay to you us, bet. please? You bet. We are working on, on trying to figure out the best way to handle that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Councilor Bird. <coughs> Gary, of those uh, approximately 600 yes. people that have filled out those apps, have we corresponded back to them and give them a, a status report on where they are? Well, I, when I say status report, have we at least got their information and we've communicated back to them in writing some yeah um, what happens every time we receive an application um, usually within a couple of weeks and it took a little bit of time at the beginning because we received so many uh, but usually uh, usually within about a week now uh, as soon as we receive an application we are sending them out a letter saying we received your application and we have placed you on the waiting list yeah. and you'll be receiving something else from us thank so they kind of have that confirmation yeah, yeah. Thank you. So they know it didn't get lost out, out in no man's land. Councilor Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we have staffed up internally to take the applications, correct? We are working on that. We haven't really hired any more staff at this current time. Okay, so are we using the NAHASDA money, or which, who's, which money is paying for those staff to accept the applications? <clears throat> Uh, our application staff are paid part of them, uh, a portion of their budget comes out of the HOSTA, a portion of it comes out of uh, the other programs, um, uh, proceeds of sale for instance. Okay. And I believe that on the mod, the budget mod tonight is a budget for our proceeds of sale that is, uh, uh, that is ran through uh, finance over here uh, to hire those additional staff. And, and that is not necessarily uh, sustainable money. That's one-time money. Is that correct? The uh, the proceeds of sale. Uh, yes and no, because the proceeds of sale we have come in every month. Uh, there's money that comes in on proceeds every month. Uh, there's also um, uh, there there's money sent out there that is proceeds of sale, and then there's additional money that comes in every month every time a house pays off. 
um, every time uh, uh, we collect rent on one of our buildings, things like that, all of that, all of that uh, generates money back into that proceeds of sale budget. Okay. And that would be 22, 25 million, something like that total for the month. I have a, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood, yes. Okay. So if on the way the program uh, works then, mm -hmm. so if um, I own my own mm -hmm. land or in Buell's next door and he's bought mortgaged his property, so he's got a mortgage, either one of us has to somehow, yeah, you're in debt, I'm not. So, <laughs> I know, Buell's the one to pick on. So, is, so on that, we both of us have to sign that over to the housing authority and as long as that 30 year mortgage is on it's in the housing authority's name yes. and then after that it would be signed over signed back over to to the individual now <clears throat> and that's how we're going to leverage to get the home payments. Yes. so what happens uh, there's where we own land are we going to give up tribal land to individuals under this model no uh, now to my knowledge no because the housing authority owns land that's setting out there that never was, uh, some of it never was developed. Uh, some of it was, I would say, underdeveloped, for lack of a better word, where maybe we built, uh, for instance, over in Don Garvin's district, we're working on seven houses. There were seven houses built on seven lots over there. There were seven empty lots. So we went ahead and built seven houses on those empty lots. Um, so there's, there's areas like that. We have several additions where there might be a few, uh, few <coughs> lots in. Uh, where we would offer it up uh, to families if they didn't own them. But we're not going to build any homes unless we have an applicant that wants that home. Yes. Yes. We're not going to, so just to make sure I heard you right on your yes, we will not build any homes that somebody we has have, We don't plan on building any homes unless someone wants it. Now, okay. we, did have, we did have the first seven homes that was kind of started before the whole process, application process got going, which is over in uh, Councilman Garvin's district that we did build, but we have folks now, I think, for just about every one of those homes. Excellent. Yeah. So but those those are the only ones that we would ever look at building before we have some. Okay. And so you're going to give us a report next month mm -hmm. on the breakdown of by county or city or whatever applicants and also tell us, I think, did some people apply that may not qualify to? That's a possibility because, okay. you know, a lot of times what on we... On either end. On actually. either end. Yeah, on, on both end. ends. Because what we will do is we will, and that's what they're doing right now. We get all those applications in, we enter them into the system, and then we start updating them. So we're doing a pool right now. We'll do a pool, for instance, we'll pull uh, 10 from Buells County, or I'm sorry, y'all are covered the same county, so we'll pull maybe 10 from Tulsa County, 10 from uh, Rogers County, and so on and so forth, and see if those folks qualify. Okay. Um, and then if we need, you know, if eight of them do, and, and <coughs> two of them don't, then we would pull, we might pull five or six more <coughs> to see how many of those qualify. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilor Garvin. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that these seven houses in my district. Yes. Also, Councilman Thornton and oh. Councilman Fulbright. Yes, I'm, I apologize uh, to both Thornton and Fulbright for that, for that, but yes. <coughs> And they're right just uh, maybe uh, 30, 30 feet from Councilman Bird and Councilman Walking Stick and Council uh, and Speaker Jordan. Can you share uh, with us who the contractors are on the footing and the slab and the well, electrical and plumbing and framing? Off the top of my head, no. I can get you a list of all of them because there's a different a different subcontractors doing each phase of it. It's not we're not con we're not con we're, the housing authority is acting as a general contractor. So we have one person is doing what we will, what we do is we bid it out and it breaks out into about 22 different phases. Uh, so we have one person, one contractor doing the footings, footings and concrete. And slab. Yeah, they they do footings and slab. We have one person doing the electrical, one person doing the con uh, the uh, uh, plumbing, and so on and so forth. Uh, the way it works is uh, we want to try to give, for instance, if you are a, uh, a Small Cherokee owned. You have your own company. Uh, you're you're a, a, just a, a small company. 
couple of you work, maybe you work family, or maybe it's you know just you, and you do something. We want to tr we want to let you be able to bid on that, so you don't have to compete with the big time On these seven houses, all those contractors, Cherokee. Um, I am almost sure that all of them are, except maybe one. There may be two that are not. And I don't know for sure. They may be Cherokee. The way it works is uh, um, there's a tariff preference supply. So if you come in and you bid and, and Mr. Keener bids on a project, um, uh, you can outbid him and you be a tariff loan company. And he could bid uh, a lower amount. <coughs> But you get a preference as a tarot owned company of 10%. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would hate to tell you because I don't want to say yes, all of them are. A majority of them are. Now, there are some areas like on the material side of it where they're not doing any labor, they're, they're supplying materials. Uh, we don't have a, uh, a, a Cherokee owned lumber company, a Cherokee owned concrete company, a Cherokee owned brick company. On these seven houses, are they committed to someone? Do uh, you have a buyer, so to speak? Or? On just about all. We, we've sent out notifications to uh, uh, families offering them to them. I know that several have taken them. Some are still looking um, and trying to, trying to make their final decision. So if they are not all, uh, if they haven't all been, uh, if someone hasn't committed to them, they are, they're, they're already in the process of it. Did you get any feedback from the neighbors in the center? I haven't heard anything from them. Um, I haven't heard anything one way or another. I will tell you that whenever we made the decision to build those seven houses out there, you know, we have a three-bedroom model with a garage on it. We have one that's a that has the garage enclosed. Um, I, I, I made the decision that all of the, the houses we built out there would be at the three-bedroom with the garage on it so they would match those other seven neighbors' houses. So they would all have the similar aesthetics. It looks like the footing's been poured for all seven and the slabs maybe for five and <clears throat> they started framing on one, looked like yep. just recently. I so. think uh, this week they will have all the slabs poured on all of them uh, and I think they was framing the first three. <coughs> uh, starting in, um, today. Once The framing's been going up pretty quick. Once they get out there and they can get started, it, it's no, usually going up pretty quick. Where the plumbing contractor is? Uh, Snyder and Snyder. And they're from out at, uh, in the Briggs community. Uh, they have uh, they've plumbed houses for years. Uh, the, I know that they're the plumbing contractor. The concrete contractor is Strong Construction. Where's he from? Rose, I believe. Rose, Oklahoma. Uh, up in... Uh, I'm not sure if he lives in the Turkey County side or if he lives on the Delaware County side or Delaware Delaware. Delaware, on the Mays County side. Delaware. Delaware. Yeah. Uh, but it's right there close. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate and it. And if y'all haven't stopped by or had the opportunity to stop by and see our model homes, we uh, moved, uh, uh, had some uh, folks have made their offices out there, so those houses are open from eight to five every day now if you I, have someone i do have one question yes. we stopped by last weekend to look at them the blind of course they're locked and they should be but the blinds were closed you couldn't even see in i will uh, i'll tell them to start leaving the blinds open Thank on you. the weekends for that reason Appreciate oh and also before i forget too we have went through and our communication staff over at the tribe is working on uh, uh compiling uh we went through and did video on all of them um so we're going to put together a video tour. Uh, uh, they're working on putting together some short clips uh, so they can upload to like a YouTube video. So if someone has a, a, a cell phone, we could send them the link or even the video by cell phone so they could watch it. And we are working on that. So even if they can't make it down, we, we've, we've tried to think about all, everyone, uh, not just the folks around here. Councilor Thornton, do you have a question, sir? Yes. yes. About forgot about it. Sorry. Wouldn't be the first time. Gary, <laughs> uh, these seven homes, are they on that four mile? Uh, they, yeah, road? They're, they're on County Line Road between four and five miles. And uh, 
they're in the process of building them. Are, are you going to fix it? Are we fixing to start up a, a homes at Bartersville also? also? Nothing at Bartersville? Not right now. Up in that area? Uh, no, we don't have any homes going up in that area right now. I haven't even received any applications for that area yet. Have you uh, done anything on like the Belfont area, Marble City area? Have you uh, we, are, we are pulling some applications for down there and just kind of a preliminary outlook of that area. We noticed uh, about three different areas in Sequoia County that we could pull from. Uh, the eastern end of Sequoia County, the central end of Sequoia County, and the western end of Sequoia County. But there seem to be about... about we're talking about Belfont and Marble City areas? Yeah. yeah. And also, just to let you know, too, uh, 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 the, the deal that we had spoke to the school about, that's a separate deal from what we have, uh, yeah. we have going on on here. Uh, also, in this next housing project going on, that, uh, uh, that we do the budget the next time. I know that uh, we're planning on building homes down there, but <clears throat> there's so many of, of those people that live in that area that could really use another bedroom built onto their house. And I don't know if that funding or any of that funding could be used for that. We could. I mean, we could even. They're trying, what these people are doing, they're trying to keep people in that area. And they're trying to, some of them have another family that can move in with them if they have another bedroom. Are we talking about on the uh, approach for that? On the new construction side? No. Or as existing house? Existing house. Gotcha. I will, uh, I will check and see if, uh, you know, before they had talked about that on, on the rehab program, if the families, what we call, over house, they have too many folks yeah. living in the house. We would add on bedrooms, but I don't know how they handle that now. Well, I know, I know some people. But you're not the first one to ask that. I either. know some people that have people move in right now. If they just have another room in their house, an additional <coughs> family member, and that that would help that area also. You okay. know, so you low income, you can't get much lower than yeah, eight yeah. percent. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at it and see if there was see if there's something we can't see if there's some kind of money out there we can do something. Like that. And it sounds, I mean, it may it may be like a good test project to at least try on a, yeah. on something to see if it would work. If, if you if you need a, a place to test it on, holler at me. I'll take you. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> Maybe a couple of. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Michael, I think we're back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, I think you have our report for the month. Uh, so glad to answer any questions. They have already answered them. I don't know. How's Honey Hill going? Not been a lot of movement since I last talked to you. I did talk mm -hmm. to Commissioner Ch uh, Chandler, and he seemed to have something in the works with. Uh, the landowner. Uh, I talked to him. I've actually talked to him a couple of times. And he seemed to be going a little bit different direction than what we talked about uh, in your office that day. Who, uh, Chandler, or the landowner? Mr. Chandler. Okay, so I talked to the landowner this morning. They wanted me to ask. Okay, he was acting. He acted like he had been in contact, uh, quite a bit of contact with the landowner okay. on that. Um, I'll make it with you here. Okay. Councilman Thornton. Yes. Uh, Mr. Lynn. Then. Sorry. Mr. Lynn. Yes. I'm well, starting to call you a different you, person. You, you call me Michael. I just, <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, Michael, uh, I know that you know. I'm going to bring up the IR roads, and I'm going to bring up a certain road there in in our district, and uh, at the White Mission Road. Uh, south from Interstate 40, and would like. I know it's on that IR road, but I'd like to know if there's any time within the next future years that, that we could have some work done on that on that road because I know it's a possibility that you know we may need it okay. and, uh, to go down to that uh, park, the park that we have. Okay. Uh, so you said from I-40 South? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I'll check into that. Thank you, you, sir. Michael, what's the 
just as of the road that runs in front of the Cherokee Children's Mission there at yeah. Nader County. Mm -hmm. Uh, Malloy Hollow Road? Yes. yes. Uh, it's in design right now. It, we, the guy that was working on that in our office had been pulled off of it to work on some other projects. Uh, he's, we've got that uh, project out right now that he was working on. He's back working on the design on that. And uh, it, it, it's still under design. It's going to be a little while. But it's was he working with, uh, I know there was a family there that was concerned about the entry to their Home, going around the curve. Yes, he, he, he's been in contact with him. Uh, Mr. Hooper, I believe. Yes. He's been in contact with him. Okay. Still haven't resolved that issue yet. Uh, we're still looking at some things on how to handle that. It's kind of a tricky situation with all the drives coming together on the curve. Yeah. Coming down a hill, no less. But. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Michael? That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. For Commerce Housing Report, Shay Smith, I think. Good afternoon. I'm sorry Anna's unable to be here this afternoon. She was at a regional um, summit meeting in Claremore today, but you should have a copy of our report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. <coughs> Councilor Keener. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick comment. Uh, Anna comes up before us every month and we've already ever asked her. Any questions? <laughs> but, okay. but I did want to make a comment. I was, I was uh, so glad to see that um, your your staff staved off 36 foreclosures, and I think got two point over two million in yes. tax returns, yes. and uh, three quarters of millions, three quarter of a million in earned income tax returns. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they that, did. That's a good job. Thank you for acknowledging that. Our staff worked diligently through Jan January through April to serve 1,500 families. So. It's a lot of people in that short amount of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, old business done pending, new business. Uh, Councilor Watts. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would like to actually have this in the form of legislation for next meeting, so I move to table. I'll second. Uh, the table has been uh, seconded. Any discussion? There's no. Sorry. Whenever, there is no uh, uh -huh. discussion on table. All those in favor of the table? Say aye. 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 All those opposed? <clears throat> discussion has been tabled. <clears throat> Any announcements? Next meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 11th, 2 p.m. Motion to adjourn and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? We're adjourned. Good job, Mr. Chairman.